How's it going everybody? Anthony or Deathkiller here. Hope you're having a good one. No, I am myself. And today I'm going to be starting my RuneScape 3 Iron Man journey. For those of you who aren't aware, I haven't played RuneScape 3 in over five years. And for the most part, I'm a complete noob at RuneScape 3. The last time I played RuneScape 3, which was five years ago, I was trying out the Iron Man mode for a little bit. I did make some decent progress, but the only things I really did was I got off tutorial. I went straight to Dungeoneering, got 99 Dungeoneering, it did nothing else because the only thing I was familiar with, did some rune span, and then did a little bit of fletching so that's why I can make myself some weapons in Dungeoneering, and then from there, once I finished off 99 Dungeoneering, I got super overwhelmed from seeing everything that you could do in RuneScape 3 that I ended up mentally collapsing and just completely quitting the game mode. Five years later, here I am now, and I'm going to be loosely following the efficient guide for RuneScape 3 Iron Man mode, more as a way to kind of keep myself on track and have something to do to kind of go through so I don't get overwhelmed whenever I feel lost or kind of don't know what to do. I am for the most part going to try to do my own thing at the same time, which my primary goal is to get into the boss of RuneScape. Because one of the main reasons I actually want to get into this game is because I personally think the bossing from what I've seen looks so much cooler and more interesting to me than the old school RuneScape bossing which for those who do not know I'm an avid old school player I play a lot of Iron Man modes and I have a main and the whole nine yards I'm not anything amazing on old school RuneScape I'm not a max player I only have like 1900 total but still I spend a lot of time playing the game making new accounts making different Iron Man the whole nine yards and just having a good time now here I am Wanting to share my journey with you guys as I learn and play RuneScape 3 for, honestly, probably one of the first times. Because last time, all I did was Dungeoneering and nothing else. So, join me as I go and explore. I'm really nervous, but I'm also really excited. Let's get right into it. Alright, let me completely skip all this. So, I need to go to Hammock Rubber to get the Wicked Hood. I do know that one. So, he is... I vaguely remember... I don't know what he looks like. I also did not at all check out the... Is that him? No. This is him. Yeah, I remember you. Hello there. Give me my hood, man. Yeah, wear this one. This gives you... I believe it gives you, like, a bunch of stuff. Like, you can teleport to the guild. You can withdraw essence daily and a bunch more stuff. Hold on. I'm going to mess with the settings real quick. I forgot to mess with the actual graphic settings. Hold on. All right, cool. I finished skipping all the day, all the intro stuff. Now it wants us, it wants me to pick a bunch of flax and turn it into bowshirt. Uh, I can do that. I think it wants me to do one inventory of that. So we're gonna give it a shot. I want to give this game mode a genuine shot. So over time, that's what we're gonna do. So now we get to trade Jack Oval and give him all of our uh, stuff here. How much do we get for this? I do not care. I I literally do not care. Can I just hold spacebar? I cannot. Now let me sell all this. Oh, nice. Come me about 1k starting cash. Anything I actually want from here? Not really. Okay, lamps. Now what do I throw lamps in? It literally does not tell me to put lamps. So I'll put lamps. Oh, it's combat. Uh, it literally does not matter then. All right, we're destroying the sword because honestly, this don't matter anyways. Can always mine and make decent stuff anyways, so we'll find with that. I remember on when I was gonna do this, when I was first planning out the the first time I was gonna do again the one many moons ago. My my original plan, and I still laugh at this because I don't I still wouldn't mind doing it, I'll be honest, but I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> um is getting that it was gonna get 99 engineering and then after that i was gonna get my rune crafting up to 99 at rune span why no idea other than having 99 so it was like oh i can have the 99 so like rune span i think made there was a reason for it and i remember like dungeoneering made sense because of the dungeoneering weapons right like the rewards in general so that made sense to me but rune span i don't remember why but there was a reason. Oh yeah, one of the things that's kind of the biggest thing I'm gonna have to get used to is daily scape. I'm not a huge fan of it, but this that's the entire go-to thing of Runescape 3 Iron Man, so that's for sure. Uh, and heavily so on the shop scape, because your shops are daily, they're not shared. So in order to, if I, back when I played, they were, you know, they were 
you know, not shared, but they were daily. So you would buy out all the shops for like runes and stuff. Then you'd call it day there. Um, so there's that. Okay. Okay. So we are here. It has been a while since I've done this, but I do remember, uh, talk to tutor. If I remember correctly, I do, it's like com complexity. F you do, when you're on your highest floor, I believe you do complexity five. Small complexity five is, I believe, what you do. Let me read into it real quick because I actually completely forget. Okay, yeah, I found the exact website I even used. It, was, it wasn't even like a, a RuneScape that the cave website was like a thing I used, and I actually really like this. So what you what I did was, and I remember this, is when I was doing the small ones, I'd be on complexity six. And then when I got to basically when um I got to the the floors that I would want to do, you know, higher level stuff on, I would then go and do it on medium. Though if, you know, for example, when you get up to like the higher dungeoneering levels, you're basically just rushing a lot of the stuff until you get to the later ones. And then you basically just reset your dungeoneering floor. I remember it now. Uh, let's go and do this. I'm going to go and do a setup. I think. All right. Let me. All right. Complexity. Six. Jackson 60 must complete. All right. So I have to go slowly through time. All right. I'm just going to go and do this. I'll catch you guys when I'm done. It's going to be fucking forever, but I'll catch you guys when I'm done with this. So I'm taking a break from Dungeoneering, go up to 27, and what I'm going to be doing is getting my woodcutting and fletching up a bit here. The reasoning for this is I am absolutely tired uh, of just going and not having a good weapon for Dungeoneering. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to go and cut and, you know, logs and turn them into arrow shafts and the whole nine yards until I get my uh fletching up to a decent level i need 28 to be able to craft the weapon i want to use in there for now which if i come here is the blood spindle staff i believe it requires 28 fletching to make yes 28 fletching to make so i'm gonna go in very slowly and painfully get all these logs get my fletching up etc i'm not going to be doing the hopping method where you hop between worlds at the top of the the thing um simply because i i don't want to Okay, I just I just don't want to. I want to get my wood cutting up. So fuck you. I realized I can easily get 20k from the two stronghold securities. So I'm quickly doing Druidic ritual here, completing it I should say, because I don't know if this is like Runescape three where you need to complete Druidic ritual in order to be able to lamp herbler. So I'd rather be safe than sorry. So I'm just quickly completing it. I'm gonna need to complete it sooner or later, anyways. So. There you go. And then from there, I'm going to do the two strong obscurities. I will get a lamp. I don't know if it can be used on Herbler, but if not, I mean, I'm going to. So I will, there you go. <laughs> uh, or if it is, then I will definitely do that. If not, then completely whatever. Uh, anyways, yeah. So there's that. Let me go knock out Rudic Ritual. I don't think I actually have the Faldor. Nope. So I'm just going to run the long way so I can get the Faldor thing. And I'll catch you guys when we're done with both stronghold securities. And that'll give me enough money to be able to buy an adamant hatchet, which... I believe, and I can be wrong here, but I believe the hatchet scale with your level. So if like I buy an Addy one and I put it in my bag, I should be able to use it all the way up until I get to, uh, until I get to, you know, that level. So it'll just like be the one below it. Okay, this is the full ten, first 10K completed. I'm gonna get the boots. I don't know if it's an achievement or anything or a diary or anything. Okay, I don't know if the last clip was cropped or not, but my game crashed again <laughs> mid-recording. I think it's something to do with OBS and recording and everything. I'd have, I'm going to have to check. It might honestly be mime running out of space, but we'll see. Anyways, going to keep this super, super quick, but I I don't know what that is, but that's cool. Um, I got I put my lamp in Herbler, and I'm going to be lamping Herbler for the most part going forward. I do want to say I don't actually know if it's better for me to lamp Herbler or summoning. I know in my previous Iron Man I mentioned I played like fucking five years ago. I was lamping summoning, but this time around I'm not going to be doing it because my logic is I can just go with the Charming Imp passively get my summoning up that way completely while doing Slayer and everything else. While Herbler is in my opinion more involved. So that's my thought process. Anyways, I want to go and buy the Mithril or Adamant Hatcher. Yeah, here we go. Oh, it's only, wow, it's only 3K. Significantly less, but I believe I can just add to my tool belt. Yeah, and now I believe 
it'll act as like the best hatchet I have for my level. So that's really cool. So I'm going to go back to Bertho. I'm going to go and chop the logs and cut them in the arrow shafts or something until I get my fletching up a good bit. And I'll catch you guys later. All right, this is going to be 20 fletching. Boom, baby. I realized I had a fletching daily, so I turned that in because I guess apparently it was just fletch stuff. So I turned that in and they got me a good chunk of levels. And this is, like I said, I've been making these because it's half the logs I'm going to need to get. So there we go. Wrestle's up to 24, almost 25k, I'm assuming, which is great, which means now I can start chopping oak logs and turning them into, I believe it's oak short bows. Yes, I can start making oak short bows, which is great. But this part about this is, this is insanely more AFK on top of being more XP per hour as well. So I'm going to go and throw these, uh, or go to Varrock and start doing just that. I decided to go to the very traditional original method of chopping oak logs where you just go to right next to the Varrock uh, West Bank here and you just chop the two oak log, oak trees here and you go and bank there so that's pretty good. I also went and got the statue collection bag so this way any of the strange rocks I get going forward for the other skills and as I put stuff in etc I will they'll just go straight in the bag so I don't have to worry about that which is super good. So I decided to do the math on how much dungeoneering, just XP and level, etc. I need in order to have access to all the things I need for dungeoneering. And luckily, getting 80 dungeoneering should give me more than enough tokens to get everything I want personally, like just initially, personally and initially right off the bat. There may be things that come up later. I'm like, oh, I want to get this. I want to get that. And I might need to get more tokens. So we'll get more levels down the road if we need to but level 80 is a good baseline for us to start out with so i'm pretty good i'm not gonna grind all the way to 99 i i don't think i will i mean hey if i end up liking as much as i did the last time all power to me but i don't think that's gonna happen i want to get at least 80 for now um from there i also need 75 engineering just to be able to complete get into prif anyways so kind of works in my favor in that sense right i need to get 75 anyways for prif so works hand in hand also, I just cut myself 280 oak logs, which should be more than enough to get myself up to level 28 fletching. I know I said I was going to go up to 35, but I'm going to go to 28 for now, just so I can go and try out the new staff in the dungeoneering. So this way I know if I need to get my runecrafting up as well as my dungeoneering, or if I just need, or as well as my fletching, or if I just need to get fletching up. So I'll catch you guys when I'm done with all these logs. Okay, this is 25 fletching stopping here. <laughs> 25 fletching, which means we can now make oak shield bows, which is the best fletching method we can do for a while now. So I'm going to go and turn the rest of these into oak shield bows, and I should get myself all the way up to 28 fletching, which is going to be super awesome. All right, this is 28 fletching, which is great. This allows us to make the blood spindle staff and wand, but mainly staff and demon hide. So that's really good. I'm going to go and actually, where's the note button? A little bit until I get the next one, uh, until I have to get the next one. That being said, I'm going to sell all these and I shouldn't get too much money yet. It's going to be a little bit here, but at least it's something. Got myself up to 30k, so that's pretty good. I am probably going to prioritize getting my fletching up along with my magic a little bit while I'm doing dungeoneering, just so I can get myself some decent, um, or sorry, so I can get myself some better weapons while doing it, because doing it with low tier weapons is honestly the worst thing I can possibly imagine. So I'm going to go back to dungeoneering and we'll see how it works. I just want to say this is so so much better i am destroying stuff so much better i i, ju I just have to say it because it is it's honestly it's great <laughs> it's really great the, having this staff so i'm definitely gonna do this whenever i can get a new weapon i'm just gonna go and uh grind out the stats for it that's for sure I, i'm just gonna do that there's no point in not doing it if i'm gonna be completely honest so yeah and i just destroyed the boss in the in the first test room i did in like two hits like it, it started trying to heal itself but it couldn't it was absolutely hilarious and awesome so when i logged in i saw a thing here at the bottom that said oh i can get four free bank boosters so i got one not realizing i had to do it each time individually so i went and did it three more times but also it reminded me that auras exist so this account is fairly old i made him when group iron man started in old school runescape and 
<clears throat> I decided to spend it had two hundred thousand loyalty points, which isn't crazy. So I decided to spend that on some stuff. So I got pendants. I believe I just got regular one. Yeah, I think it's just regular pendants. I got master green fingers, which is I believe one or two points away from the, the next one. So this is good. What this does is every hour um, I have a 7% chance to have, you know, uh, prevents crops from being diseased and provides 7% chance to increase crop yield. So basically from what I remember is like you activate it during your run and it's perfectly fine. So when I do herb runs, I'll probably definitely do this one. Um, <clears throat> and then the main thing is I got Supreme Jacket Traits. I was going to get it all the way up to max, but I couldn't afford it. So I just stopped at the one right below it. So that's pretty good. And we'll probably keep it at Supreme for a while for anyways. And what's good about this one is this is basically a, I don't know if it's a daily or weekly, it's a daily. So it's a daily thing and you do, basically you get XP in as many skulls as you can. And then you go and you get like a lamp basically from it. I'm probably not gonna be taking advantage of it too much until later down the road but for now it's you know it's good to have i'll probably take advantage of it more later down the road like i said but again for now it's fine okay i believe this will be level 50 dungeoneering let's see here yep this is definitely level 50 dungeoneering yep all the, oh we got two levels from that one nice so that's 51 dungeoneering. oh my god we got a lot of xp for that one <laughs> nice uh i'm actually gonna stop here because i am at 33 magic and i'm still using the level i believe it's the level 20 weapon so i definitely want to get my mat my uh fletching up some more i need to get up to i believe it's level 38 so i need to go chop some more oaks and willows and we'll go from there but most notable thing is we're not 51 dungeoneering and 33 magic so we're going to keep going going to grind up my fletching up to 38 so this way we can go and start using the level 30 staff and go from there. So I did a little bit of research on the weapon I'm going to utilize because I want to make sure my weapon progression is a little bit properly planned out for my intro into PVMing and bossing in this game. I'm kind of glad I did. I ended up finding a new weapon that completely changes what I was going to do um, for the most part. And that is the Vanquish. The Vanquish is a weapon you get for 150 quest points just... You just get it. You know, the, the, I think I showed it in one clip where, like, there's this, like, chest or whatever. Yeah, once you get every 25 quest points, you get a reward. So, at 150 quest points, you get this weapon called Vanquish, which is really cool. All it does is it can switch between all three styles, and it's a tier 75 weapon, which is really good, which is only five levels off from the uh, Vanquish, or from the Chaotix, which is tier 80. What this means is I'm going to revise my entire dungeoneering plan a little bit here. So instead of going up to 80, I'm only going up to 75, which will give me 1.2 million experience or 120,000 tokens. And I'm gonna be using these tokens on pretty much the same things I was gonna do, except no Chaotix. I'm gonna get the Charming Imp and then a Gem Pouch and that's basically it now de later down the road i'm definitely going to, want to get my dungeoneering up and who knows maybe i will want to get chaotic a chaotic staff or chaotic weapon for a boss in the future but i think for now this is a good kind of stepping stone for me and will allow me a lot more flexibility and a lot more time to do other things without having to sit here and be like oh i want to grind my dungeoneering out to 80 you know what i mean 75 is a lot more manageable in my opinion than 80 so there's that Anyways, I will go and catch you guys in a second here once I get finished getting my fletching up to 38. So I missed the clip of it, so I apologize, but this is 38 fletching and 45 wood cutting in the back. Okay, I believe I talked to this guy to claim my reward. It took me it took me a little bit longer than normal, or than I think most people would get it in, so I do apologize for that. But we're going to be throwing this into, wow, 450 herbal experience. I just want to see how much XP we get in different things. I believe it scales with our character's level, which is good. I'm obviously going to be throwing it into herb lore. I just want to see what power to get. Pretty good fleshing experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we'll just get, you know, we'll get herb lore experience. I think that's like a, yeah, two levels. Oh, wow, almost three. That's nice. That's good. Definitely going to be doing that. I think that's a daily, so every day I can do that. So that's pretty good. Um. Anyways, now I'm going to go back to... Uh, doing dungeoneering. <laughs> I think after this model I'll have it. Let's see. I should. Uh, no, I'm dangerously close. Okay, so next mob I should have it.
Okay, here it is. I missed it, but this is 40 magic, which means I need to get the last upgrade for uh that I can I'm gonna bother crafting for myself inside Dungeoneering. Alright, I believe this is the quest completed. Yep. Level well, I got something a little, but this is White Wolf what bleh. Wolf Whistle completed, which means we now have access to summoning skill. We'll use the lamp to get ourselves up to, I think it's level four summoning. Yeah. I'm like randomly finding super cool things in this game. And I really like this. You have a, I guess it's like a, you know, in this thing, I noticed this, but it's like a beast thing. And it just shows you like the different bosses and even Slayer creatures, I guess, if you want to. But more just on boss info. This is where you can click on it and it gives you like a recommended you know, item or level, it goes for example. So it gives you recommended level to do, the group size for it. Uh, it tells you if you have any of the requirements to actually do it. It, it has the collection log here. It shows like a teleport, I guess, maybe if you unlock the teleport. And even has like a learn button where you can go and you can click on the wiki to learn more. So this is just the info on the boss. This is so cool. Okay, this is about to be level 50 fletching, which is great. We're now at our, our, our kind of first breaking point in the skill which is the ability to start cutting maple bows so that's good i am going to finish off this last three and then we'll sell all of them and see what our actual profit's going to be and not our guest profit so let's go and this is hello, fuck, hello, fuck, hello. fuck 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 i'm gonna delete this clip so I decided to take a break from doing the Dungeoneering grind to go work on some questing and uh, general combat grinding as well. I'm mainly going to focus on questing here, but I want to get my range level caught up to my magic level because it feels awkward having 40-something magic and every all my other combat sets being abysmally low. So going to go and grind these out. I hear this is really good all the way up to level 40, so I'm just going to do these bad boys all the way up to level 40 here using the charge bro because I one-shot them and going from there my daily does reset in a couple minutes so i'll do my daily challenge and i believe my aura will also reset at that point um oh i got three hours until reset so in three hours i'll also do that as well to get my free to uh free some herbal or xp for myself while i'm doing this i'm also if you can see here collecting the random herbs and seeds i'm getting don't know how useful they're gonna be um but i figure i might as well obviously i'm also collecting the charms because the charms are incredibly useful for the future so there we go i do kind of regret not doing more dungeoneering because it is going to be a lot easier collecting the charms by having it but my life isn't going to be over. You know, I'm going to have plenty of time to get there. I'm already halfway there with the token, so I'm not too worried. Uh, and I'm getting a lot more XP per hour doing it, so it'll be fine. Anyways, I'll catch you guys when I'm done with this. My mic was muted when I was recording, so I feel like an idiot. Anyways, this is 40 ranged. We collected a good bit of herbs, but I'll be completely honest. Once I get to level 38, I just basically stopped collecting all the herbs. So just fair warning on that one. In terms of seedage, we got ourselves, as you can see here, a good bit of seeds. Okay, completed my aura for the day. I have something here. Yeah, 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 I know. Go do this. And while I was there, I actually bought myself 100 bottles of water and eye of newts. So this way I could do all my guams. But let's go and do this. Got ourselves up to 21 herb lore. Very nice. I'm actually going to go and do all of the guams I have. All right, this is the last inventory of attack potions going to be made. This is also going to be, obviously, the last level, which is 25 herbler, all the way from level 21, I believe. So we got ourselves four levels of herbler experience, which is pretty awesome, if I do say so myself. This is Violet is Blue 2, or Violet is Blue 1, sorry, completed. And I just have to say, this was such a cute little quest i loved it it was adorable you're helping this little girl just like have a good time and have a cute little adventure and i don't know man it was awesome i enjoyed it this is like the essence of runescape in my opinion having cute little quests like this nothing crazy grand just something fun with stupid jab dad jokes jabbed in like i liked it anyways i'm gonna throw all these lamps into farming because that's what the guy tells me, and I have the inability to think on my own, so I'm throwing all these into farming. Uh, and this is Violet is Blue 2 completed. There's still some, I guess, some fancy little things. We get a whip. Cool, we're like a really good player now with a whip. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Anyways, we get these lamps, which we're going to use one on construction here. 
4k construction rate. Wow, 21 construction for that. That's awesome. Here's another one on summoning because, well, our summoning is definitely lacking. Again, 21 summoning. Absolute poggers. And the last one we're supposed to use on Fletching, but because I'm 100k into Fletching, I'm actually going to be using it on Herbler. we get us up to 28 Herbler, which is enough to make ourselves energy potions. Nice. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to move on to the next thing, which is... I don't actually know. Let me go do the next quest, I guess. This is Gunner's Ground completed. We have five quest points from this one, and I think this lamp doesn't really give us much. Um, yeah, I think it's only got yeah, 200 XP, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, it's a little bit of something at least. Now I believe I need to go down to Draenor and complete some more quests. This is Ernest the Chicken completed. We get for 300 feathers. All right, this is Swept Away completed, which gives us a little bit of XP we can drop in the stuff. Goblin Diplomacy completed, and we have enough quest points to get our first quest point reward. So I'm going to head over to Varrock and show you guys exactly that. Give me one second. Okay, so this is it, and if my memory serves correctly, I believe I can just come here and press open shop. Now, you do get a message in your chat when you've reached the milestone, so that's pretty good. So you just come over here, and you can, yeah, I think it shows you everything you can get, like the whole progression tier and the whole nine yards. I'm going to go with the Vanquished here. Um... You know to get this armor in the whole nine yards i don't really see a, i the only reason i would see going for these other ones is if like it's every 150 quest points so like the only reason i would say you would go for these other ones is if like you're already a higher level player but anyways let's go down here let's claim our reward no words claim oh so i would we just come unlock one so we're gonna use this one and we're gonna accept the braces first like i said we want to go to vanquish because vanquish is going to be our tier 75 uh weapon we're going to use so we can claim all rewards now or, oh we don't need to sorry <laughs> still dumb uh, so we get these these are just a hybrid bracers i guess i'll equip them for now just because it's something i need to defense. but anyways what's really cool though is this magic dice so you get like a random clue scroll item on top of like 250k this is absolutely busted for Iron Man. Um, and it's crazy good. Let's see what we get. We got ourselves Black Full Helm G, which if obviously for a regular count sells for 32k, which is crazy. And we're just gonna add this minor corn pouch. We're not 300k. Gonna throw these in that's the bank stuff, sorry. They're just gonna throw these into we're gonna go to the bank and throw these into the bank and bank everything. Since I'm in Varric, I'm also gonna get myself a Upgrade, I believe this is the best bow I can actually get at the moment, which is the U short bow. Here we go. We're gonna buy a U short bow, which we're gonna use as well, which is gonna be great. And then on top of that, we're gonna buy some ammunition for it. So we'll buy ourselves some Addy arrows and some mythos. We're gonna I completely forgot about this. I was reading the guide and it tells you to come here to get a thousand runes. I completely forgot this place existed. So you come here to the Void Knight place. There's a where the fuck are you? Oh, you're outside <laughs> you can trade this squire here and you have access to a thousand of the elemental rune types so we're going to be running super low on cash but what we are able to do now is if i have an absolute insane amount of runes well let me pause it and show you guys the amount of runes i've collected over time nothing absolutely mind-blowing but it's what i've been spending all of my money on periodically so let me show you okay so the runes we have here are pretty simple we have 2600 uh, air runes, 2,500 water runes, 2,500 fire runes, and 2,500 earth runes. This is like 1,200 more than the guide I'm following suggests because I've been working on fletching and getting extra cash that way. I also have like 100 or like 33k extra comparatively, or 50k extra, I should say, comparatively the one I normally would have. No, it's 30k extra than what the guide says as well, so that's pretty good. I am going to go and go start doing rune span now so I can get my rune crafting up to 50 so this way I can start doing the Vizwax. I'm not going to do it every day like the guide suggests because it's absolutely just crazy money you're going to have to spend. Instead, I'm just going to do it just kind of as I need. Um, the main purpose for Vizwax, I believe, is just used to have quick teleports which isn't a huge deal for me and i'll mainly use it for like if i'm farming something and i need the quick teleports but for general running around it's not that big of a deal for me 
So really quickly before I end the episode here, I figure I might as well go over how rune span works for anyone who might be curious. When you first come in, what you're gonna to wanna to do is grab some floating essence here. I think you can only grab it once. Yeah, you're when you you grab it when you just need essence, and then from there that you're done. Then from here, you just go and do whatever, you know, essence sling and stuff you can get. You get about some basic XP just from trying, and then every time you actually get a rune from them, you get a little bit of XP drop. So this is super kind of AFK XP per hour here initially. And this is just how you get your initial start. Now, once you're like, okay, you know what? I need some more rune essence. You can go and just chip off the essence sling with 10 of the, uh, I believe it's 10 of the rune needed, and it'll give you a bunch of rune essence. Otherwise, you can just go and completely siphon it like i did there and you'll just get a bunch of rune essence as well then from here what you really should do for xp is by going over oh perfect i'll show you going over to like for example the cyclone here uh these different things are just way better xp and these are super afk so these are what you're meant to do you're only really meant to do the esslings when you need essence um when you need actual essence itself otherwise you're just supposed to go sit here and like use the cyclones mind storms and stuff like that Regardless, so I'm going to end the episode here. I hope you guys really did enjoy this first one. Sure, if it's not too long or if it's too short, I actually don't know where I'm at, but I figure this is a good place for us to end. We have about 495 total, almost 500, 27 quest points, nothing crazy in terms of actual progress. And next episode, you'll catch me. I'll have my 50 room crafting. So this way, uh, I'll be able to start doing my visvax and stuff like that. So anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next episode.